Morning guys, uh, I'm in a local woodland today, um, welcome back to channel by the way, uh, and I'm doing some fungi photography. So over here I've got a whole array of uh, fungi and it's a really great uh, little area of fungi because I've got multiple uh, compositions that I can do here. So to start with, um, I've got one um, sort of fungi head in amongst, and I'm focused on that, in amongst all the other fungi, so I'm quite close. Um, so this will be sort of a macro shot and then I'm going to pull out and do um, a much bigger group and that will be sort of a close-up shot. So when it comes to macro photography, a true macro shot is when you're uh, reproducing the image at a one-to-one -one life size ratio. So that basically means if you were to measure the subject, let's say it's a 15 millimeter bug and then uh, you were to take the digital sensor out of the camera, which is not to be advised, obviously, uh, and measure that bug on the digital sensor. It would also be 15 millimeters. That'll be a one-to-one -one life size ratio. And uh, of course, a macro uh, lens will give you the ability to focus close enough to give us that one-to-one -one ratio. Now, I'm not probably full one-to-one uh, -one ratio here because these fungi are reasonably big, uh, but I'm in quite close and uh, I'm focusing on one here, right in the middle, and I've got some other fungi around it. And what I'm doing is I'm using my um, LED light panel to change the angle of light, because it really changes the shape of the fungi. So I'm lighting it from underneath, I'm lighting it from the side, I'm lighting it from the top. And I'm also, also shooting it with just natural light. So this is like a supplementary light. Um, and it means I can change the angle of the light. So that's really good. Uh, it's really dull conditions at the moment. And again, soft lighting is perfect for fungi photography. And it's not that windy, which is also good for most close-up uh, photography, insects, flowers and fungi. Although with the fungi, uh, it's not quite so bad because they're quite robust um, uh, structures. So even if it is windy, they're not waving around in the wind. Whereas a flower or an insect on sort of a blade of grass, uh, that's going to be waving around even in the slightest breeze so when it comes to flowers and insects you really want it to be a really still day whereas for fungi photography if it is a bit windy that's not such a big problem because normally they're low to the ground and as i say they're very robust in their structure so they don't uh wave around in the uh, in the wind anyway so yeah i'm going to uh, crack on uh, what i'll do um is i'll put some pictures up um of this uh, composition first and I'm going to show you different um, uh, compositions with different angles of light. The first picture in this series was lit with my LED light panel and the light is off to one side and shining on the front of the fungi. So a slight angle but basically shining on the front and this picture was shot at f16. The second picture is lit from underneath the fungi and as you can see it gives us a completely different shape to that uh, subject and not only that because the light is shining upwards it's not reaching the background so the background has gone really dark and that makes the fungi stand out from the background it sort of simplifies uh, the the messiness of uh, what's behind the fungi and then the third picture that was taken uh, in natural light so um, no LED panel whatsoever and that was also shot at f16. I'm also shooting uh, with uh, a two different types of apertures. Now, um, generally the biggest problem with macro photography is a lack of depth of field. Because we're close to the subject, it's really hard to get a really big depth of field. So generally you would shoot with quite a high f number. Uh, but in this case, I'm doing both. I'm shooting wide open at f2.8 because when I do that, I've got just one little sliver of in-focusness and that's at the front of this fungi. And then I'm going to shoot at f16 to give me a bigger depth of field. Uh, but that will mean more of the, uh, the foreground uh, fungi uh, will be in focus and more of the background will be in focus. So in some ways that can be a bit distracting. So again, what I'll do is I'll put up uh, one of the really wide open aperture, f2.8 shots, and I'll put up one of the uh, shots at f16 and you can see the difference. And then last but not least, what I am going to do is I'm going to do a focus stack because that helps me to control my depth of field because I can focus, I can take um, various pictures with different points of focus just along the fungi that I want to be in focus. And that means the foreground fungi will still be out of focus and the background will be out of focus. So it means I can uh, basically select with a lot more accuracy the bit of the picture I want to be in sharp focus and leave the rest of it out of focus. On this fourth shot, I'm using a much lower F number. In 
fact it's f3.8 and as you can see there's way less of the fungi in focus but the background is is quite nice um but i think with the with this image there's just not enough of our main subject which is the fungi in focus so what we get with this lower f number we get a really nice soft background which is great but that minimal depth of field hasn't given enough of our enough depth of field for the main subject so on the last picture this was our focus stack and as you can see we've still got that really soft background which looks lovely but our main subject the fungi has got much more of it in focus so i think this is an ideal uh, situation by doing a focus stack we can put the as i mentioned in uh, the bit before these pictures uh, we can actually control our depth of field to a much greater degree so with uh, pictures one and three the f16 means the fungi has got uh, a good amount of detail there's enough depth of field to get the detail of the fungi that we want but the background as you can see is quite distracting because although the background isn't in focus it's still more defined so that background looks messy in uh, picture number four the f3.81 yeah the background is much softer but it just doesn't work for our main subject because enough, not enough of that is in focus so our last shot uh, is like the best of all worlds really because we've got the fungi in focus the background is soft the foreground is soft so we've got a much better control over depth of field and as i say that's what focus stacking does and incidentally the last picture was also lit with natural light i've done two types of focus stack here actually um, i've done a manual focus stack where i focus at the front of the uh, the fungi i'm photographing and then i slowly move the focus point down that fungi uh, manually which is one way of doing this or the other way now i've got my z62 that's got an internal focus stack uh, menu which is great because it means I can set the focus point at the front of the uh, thing I want to be in focus and then the camera will work out how many pictures it needs to take to um, to go right through the range of that uh, subject so it will focus automatically along the subject to give you the depth of field you need so um, that's probably uh, going to be a more accurate way of doing it because the camera's going to work out each step uh, but if you haven't got internal focus stacking it's not a problem because you can do that manually and that's i've done both and um, i think that way uh, i know i've got the shot in the bag so what i'm going to do now is move on to a slightly wider composition um, not so close up and get a bigger group of fungi because i really like the way this is hard to see from here but i'll show you in a minute but i love the way this trunk uh, that the fungi is growing on is at like a diagonal angle and i'd like to bring that diagonal in and at the moment you can't see that because all i've got is uh, i'm homed in on just one fungi with a few fungi around it so that's the next step come out a little bit further and create more of a close-up composition rather than a macro composition On the previous focus stack that you've just seen, um, I actually manually focused uh, for that focus stack. So I'm focused along the, um, the fungi and I set the focus step by step uh, in manual focus mode. For this second stack, I let the camera work it out for me. So I picked uh, a series of 50 pictures. You can shoot on most cameras, I think, up to about 999. It does vary. And the camera worked out the distance between one picture and the next. Uh, and that's uh, working on the, uh, the way I've set up the menu. So how wide I wanted the distance between one picture and the next picture to be in terms of focus. And you can see it's done a really good job. Now, on the first image you see here, I thought I'd put in a couple two or three images to show you the difference between uh, the focus points so on this first one the camera's focusing on the front of the fungi on this second picture it's focusing roughly in the middle and then on the third picture it's focusing at the back so i didn't want to put all 50 pictures in obviously there's lots of pictures in between those three points to create this extended uh, depth of field and then on this picture number four that's uh, the 50 pictures put together into a focus stack and you can see it's given given us a really nice depth of field from the front to the back of the fungi um, now these pictures were all raw files and they're unedited raw files so i've done nothing to them so for the last picture in this series this is the 50 pictures focus stacked together with a slight adjustment to the contrast to give the image a bit more punch 
The day before I shot this video, um, I was out in my local woodland and I was looking for fungi to photograph. So I was doing a recce basically, and I come across this fantastic fungi you can see here. And I thought, ah, oh, that's great, I'll use that tomorrow. And literally I went back the next day to shoot this vlog. And by then the fungi had already pretty much disintegrated. So it just shows you that this stuff doesn't stick around for very long. So if you find some great fungi, it's best to get it there and then and get your photography done because you never know if it's going to be there the next day. Right, well that's about it guys. Uh, cracking morning. I spent a couple of hours literally just around this subject. It's like a landscape in miniature. As I say, there's so many different angles and compositions. There's probably loads that I haven't taken that I could have taken, but it's been a great morning. Uh, so what I'm going to need to do now is get all these pictures back get them onto the computer because there will be a bit more post-production involved in this sort of shot. Uh, firstly, I've got the focus stacks to uh, think about. And secondly, because we're in close, you magnify any slight defects. So if there's a slight blemish on, on the fungi, then I might want to take that out, although that could be frowned upon in, in nature photography. Uh, but if there's a little bit of debris around it, I might want to take that out in Photoshop as well. Uh, and as I say, I've got to put the focus stacks together. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have enjoyed it, if you can give it a thumbs up, a like, that would be brilliant. That always helps my channel. Uh, and if you have liked this video and you haven't already subscribed, if you can consider subscribing, that would be brilliant. Oh yeah, and if you do subscribe, press the little bell icon and you'll be notified when my next video is uploaded. So as I say, it's a cracking um, type of photography, macro photography, because you don't have to go very far. This is a local woodland about, I don't know, 10 minutes away from where I live and uh, I've literally walked down the path and found this subject in fact I found this uh, a day or two ago when I was out having a little wander around um, but no doubt if I walked another 20 or 30 yards down that way or, or up that way I'd find other stuff to photograph so it's a great type of photography you don't need to go far and as I say you don't necessarily need a macro lens because for the further out shots um, a regular lens will be fine so you only need the macro lens or extension tubes or close-up filters or bellows if you want to get really in close for that one-to-one -one, uh, life-size reproduction but for close-up shots ordinary lens works just as well so uh, thanks for watching i'm going to shut up now um, and i'll speak to you on my, my uh, next video so bye for now guys